Hello and welcome back to NAS Compared. And today I want to look at these two Gold Series NASs, the 473 and the 473E, and help you decide which one's right for you. What's the difference and why, why, why did QNAP do this? So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so the TVS 473 series, and indeed the 673 and the 873, have been around for about a year from the guys at QNAP. It was long in the delivery. I mean, it was announced, and we didn't really hear anything about it last year uh, for a long time until it was finally released right at the top of the year in January 2017. Now, when it was first released, it did come with substantial price tag attached. It was around, I think, the earliest, the lowest spec model there, the 8 gig uh, quad core AMD version. Uh, that arrived at about seven or eight hundred nicker, even for the lowest spec model. But it did arrive with features that we hadn't seen on other NASes. Namely, if you look at it up there, it came with the remote control, that new and improved one, quick access port there on the front, an insane RM, um, AMD and uh, Radeon infused, if you will, CPU, and of course USB Type A ports there on the rear. That let you, uh, you um, sorry, USB 3.1 Gen 2 um, A ports there on the rear, so you could back up even faster or make faster drives network accessible. Now it's been around for quite a while and it has sold very well indeed. QNAP and Span.com are both confirmed, but as we've entered into 2018, a number of you out there have considered the 73 series, and again, I'm talking the 473, 673, and 873. But you found that price tag just too intimidating. Indeed, the 8 bay model with 64 gig of RAM and all over the place and 16 gig, some of these go for about over £2,000, which is an enormous amount of spend um, to spend. If you are like an enterprise level user, maybe, but if you're a home or small office user or a wedding photographer, it's just too big a price tag. So, what QNAP did is they re released the series, but this time adding that little E on the end. And what that E did, I don't know whether the E stands for economy or anything, but what it means is this model now arrives with a few things removed to make it more cost efficient. And it's removed the price tag of somewhere between 50 to 100 pounds across the entire range, depending on which unit you look at. So, the 73E, we're looking at the 473 here, first and foremost, they have removed that remote control. So the remote control has gone from this device. If you go for the regular 73 series, not the 73E, you do get that remote control, because I personally love the remote. Um, otherwise, the unit itself internally is exactly the same. It arrives with the same CPU and memory, the DDR4 memory, and that insane um, RX AMD uh, CPU inside. But if we look at the rear, the other big change we can see is the lack of those USB ports. Those USB ports are not on the device, which is, I don't know, I don't know if you're utilizing them, you would, you know, I utilize this exact same device and I have ba a backup going to a USB Type A, um, USB 3.1 Gen 2 slot going onto a lacy disk. And I can tell you right now that that is useful if you're creating localized backups. Luckily, that's the only main differences between these two devices. It wasn't like my video I did before with the B versus the BE series. Lots of differences here. But I've got to say, that if you are looking for the perfect 7.3 series, it is not going to be a cheap NAS. So the idea that you could save 50 to 100 bucks by not having the remote and those USBs, I personally think is a pinch short-sighted because the remote control on its own is incredibly um, enabling for you in terms of having things connected via HDMI and flicking between applications with those dedicated buttons, as you can see. But otherwise, that is the main difference between the 7.3 and the 7.3e. If you enjoyed this or want to see more of my comparisons, do check out the other videos. Don't forget to click like and subscribe if you enjoyed this to support the channel. Do visit me at nascompares.com. I'll see you next time.